I'm gonna go over how I made my Spider-Verse fan animation in Blender. Please note that I'm a beginner and also learning, so there's many and probably even better ways to do things, but this is the process that worked for me. So first, we'll be talking about how I sculpted my head in Blender. Starting with this plain icosphere, to this. First of all, you should gather good reference images or drawings to base your sculpt off of. Make sure you have a front and side view and preferably a top and low angle as well. Next, you want to add an icosphere and subdivide it a bunch so we could comfortably and smoothly sculpt our ball. Subdividing will add more planes to your ball to prevent issues such as this. However, the more planes your computer has to calculate, the slower your blender experience will be. Finally, in our sculpting menu, I'd suggest mirroring your sculpting tool in whatever axis your face is aligned with. So you could do this instead of sculpting both sides individually. You can also turn this feature off and it keeps all your adjustments, so you can add asymmetrical features at the end. Remember that not everything has to be one object. You could sculpt ears out of another sphere object separately and then join the head to the ears to create a single object again if you want. These are the main sculpting tools I use for the head, but use whatever gives the effect you want. The hair was just a particle system that I combed into place. I didn't stick to my reference photos here, but I just tried to make it look as cool as I could. I knew the final shot was only going to include mostly the front of the head, so I just left the back empty to save some time. For the jacket, I started it out with a cube, extruded edges, and added loop cuts to create a very basic jacket shape. I only modeled half because I used the mirror modifier to create the left side. From here, you could go into the sculpt editor instead of modeling and then create more realistic proportions, details, folds, and then smooth out any sharp corners. For the Spider-Man mask, I just modeled another simplified head, but ran a cloth simulation with my head as a collision object. I then selected a preferable frame and applied the simulation as a shape key. Texture painting is actually really fun. It takes a bit to set up, but painting color variations on my model was so satisfying and intuitive as a primarily 2D artist. Also remember to not only save your Blender file, but also save your image textures. This is so dumb, but your image textures do not save with your Blender file, so you have to save them all separately before closing the program. To create the graffiti effect, I just use the texture paint on a transparent plane. Man, this is never gonna work. So I just used the Rigify add-on in Blender and then deleted the bones I didn't need because it's faster than creating a whole armature from scratch. Since my shot doesn't need legs and the model is legless, I deleted the leg bones. I don't know how to do face animation either so I got rid of the face bones. And I don't know what these bones are for but I deleted those too. Now I parented the model to the armature with automatic weights and then tested it out on pose mode. You could see some issues, but skimming over a lot of details, I fixed this under weight painting. 
Creating the iRig was much more complicated, but I'll leave a good tutorial that I followed in the description. I finally made it to the fun part, animating. One of the first things I did before I actually started to pose my character is take a video of myself for animating reference. You can use reference in different ways, but I tried to focus on small micro movements and the shifting weight of my body to create a more realistic animation. Using my reference as a guide, I just posed my armature and added keyframes in the dope sheet. I also changed the keyframe interpolation to constant to get that jittery movement. For the hat, I was able to animate it stretching using shape keys. This allowed me to sculpt and stretch my model to create a new shape without having to rig anything. The environment was super simple. All I did was use a random video on my computer, slap an emission shader on it, and boom, a TV screen. Then I blocked out simple details with cubes, added random details, and texture painted some graffiti. The people walking in front of the camera were just an overlay I found on YouTube, but it took a lot of trial and error to get the alpha channels to work in Blender. Here's the screenshot of my shading nodes, but I wouldn't copy this mess, it's like really bad. I positioned them separately, delayed their timing, and animated simple 3D umbrellas to move among the crowd to give it more depth and I also added some lights and a flat plane outside of the camera's view to create a bounce light on the model's face. I added a decimate modifier to the jacket and face. This created larger and more visible polygons which had a cooler look than perfectly smooth shading. This also had the added benefit of reducing the amount of polygons the computer has to calculate, which sped up the work process. Inspired by this scene across the Spider-Verse, I wanted to add hand-drawn rain animation to the scene. I imported all the individual files to Adobe Animate and tried to draw the rain on top of it, however it just didn't look good, so I scrapped that idea. With this, the project is complete and we can render. Overall, this project was very frustrating to work on. Uh, there are several moments that I nearly gave up and scrapped everything, but eventually coming back, finding a solution, and finishing the project was so rewarding. I am definitely more confident to dive into 3D again. This video is more of an overall process than a detailed tutorial, so I could dive into each of these topics more in depth in future videos. But yeah, this video isn't meant to be able to like follow along and create exactly what I made. But hopefully this helps you guys understand what goes into a project like this and where to start. Thank you. Bye-bye.